everyone we just left off on part two of layer three router concepts we're going to continue on with this example guys so if you haven't watched part one and part two maybe just have a look before you dig into this particular video so what have we got just before in part two what we were just looking at is this routing table for this particular router and what we said is that it knows about two particular networks of slash 24 so we know about the network one which basically is 192.168.1.0 and we know about network two 192.168.50.0 so now that we know this router knows about each of these networks what we can do from a host perspective is we can send a message across from one network to another so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move to the simulation mode guys and we're going to walk through this process together so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on well in actual fact i can go into pc zero i can go into for example the command prompt and what i'm going to do guys is you might remember me looking at the arp table before so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to use that command arp dash a and this will show me all of the entries it knows about so at this moment in time, guys, the only mapping it knows is this PC1. This basically, this was the 192.168.1.11. So what's going to happen, guys, is when I go to ping, and just in a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping from this PC1 over to PC2. Now, what this PC0 is going to recognize is going to say, hold on a second. I no longer want to travel in my only, my local area network. I need to go outside of my network. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to go through my local default gateway, okay, or my router that's configured. So at this moment in time, it doesn't know about the MAC address for basically this, um, this, this, this router. So what it's going to have to do first is it's going to need to ARP for this MAC address of 192.168.1.1. It will get back the MAC address and then it will be able to send the ping request. Now, likewise, when, the, when this ping gets to this router, what's going to happen is this router is going to go, okay, I look, I'm looking to see where you're going to. It's going to look up its destination, basically IP address, and it's going to say, oh, I see that you want to go to PC2, but it's not going to have the IP the ARP mapping. So it will need to ARP for PC2's information. So it will have to ARP, get the ARP response, and then what it will have to do is it will then have to send on the ICMP request. Now, what can happen in this process, guys, is that because this router won't have this mapping of ARP, what can happen is the ICMP or the initial ICMP request can time out. So we'll see this in this process. So let's walk through this together. So what I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to command prompt and I'm going to ping my friend. So I'm going to say ping 192.168.50.10. So this is my friend PC2 over here. Okay, once I do that, it's going to, as I said, it's going to ARP. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to ARP and say, hey, it, this is a different network. So in order, because it's in a different network, I can't just ARP for it locally on this local area network. I have to talk through my, through my router. What does it do? It basically shouts out, hey, I'm looking for the MAC address of 192.168.1.1. So it's asking, first of all, for the MAC address of this basically router. So what we're going to see is it's going to go up to this router first and this router, now it's a broadcast message, it's going to go out all ports. So we're going to see that this guy will get the message but it will basically say I'm not 192.168.1.1, this isn't for me and it will basically discard it. But this guy will say oh that's me, I need to respond back with the ARP, uh, basically with my ARP address or the MAC address uh, correctly put. So it's going to reply back here it comes, this one didn't re respond because it's not 1.1. So now the ARP response comes back. This guy can now forward the message, the ICMP request. And have a look at this, guys. If we dig into the TCP IP suite, look at the source. It's going from 192.168.1.10, going to a final destination of 192.168.50.10. So we're, we're going from source to end destination. But have a look at the MAC address information, guys. And this is the key part. Have a look. It's going from this source MAC address. So this is me at PC0. That's my source MAC address. But it's going to a destination of 6601. Whose MAC address is that? 
that's actually, believe it or not, the router's MAC address. So if I go into the router, for example, guys, just to show you this, I can actually see this information. If I do, for example, show interface um, gigabit zero slash zero. So let's do that. So if I move this over to just expand this, have a look at this, guys. Have a look. Look at its MAC address there of that interface of gigabit zero zero. It ends in 6601. Can you see that? So again, ending in 6601. So what's happening now is this encapsulation process, folks, and this is really important when it comes to sending messages from a PC. What are we essentially doing? The computer is sending out a packet now, an IP packet, but basically it's got a source IP address of this computer in it. So again, we can see of 1.10, going to its final destination of 50.10, who's that? PC2, but then in its lower layer, it relies upon, remember IP relies upon, basically it's layer two information, it's gonna rely upon ethernet to basically say, okay, send this to my local default gateway. So the frame information is gonna have my source MAC address going to a destination MAC address of this router. So off it goes, guys. Once it gets to the router, what's gonna happen? Basically this ICMP message is gonna get up to the router and the router is gonna go, oh, the, 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 the destination MAC address is for me. So what it's going to do is it's going to strip off that basically um, MAC address information. And what it's going to do, and you can see here, guys, it's, it's getting, it's gone too quick ahead of me. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to say, oh, I can see you're wanting to go to basically the destination 192.168.50.10. But at the moment, I don't have a MAC address for that. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to ARP for that address. So what it's going to have to do is it's going to send out an ARP message to say, hey, everyone on this local area network, who's got the IP address 192.168.50.10? Who's going to come back? This broadcast message is going to go to everyone, but this guy is going to respond back to say, hey, that's me. And this router is going to get that MAC address mapping. So let's watch this. In the meantime, that ICMP message failed. Okay, so but let's have a look. It goes to both computers but this computer is gonna respond back. So now guys, here we can see the MAC address now is coming back and now this router knows the MAC address mapping for PC2. But at this stage, back at my PC, this ICMP message has failed. It's timed out. We saw it there in the router. So if I keep pressing fast forward, guys, the ARP message now has come back. So the router's happy now, but this first ICMP message is lost. So if I keep pressing play and play and play, we might get some STM, STP message. But what's happening here, guys, is we don't have any more ICMP. So this ICMP has failed. So if I keep going, keep going, keep going, eventually what's going to happen is this PC is going to say, oh, what's happened to me is I've lost that first ICMP. Now you can still see it's basically it hasn't request timed out just yet. So I need to keep pressing fast forward. So again, it's going to... Keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting. The time is ticking on now. Now, guys, you can see that it, after a certain length of time, this PC has said, oh, nothing's come back. I'm gonna send another response, my second ICMP message out. So you can see here, look at this, guys. The first request timed out, but now it sent another one. It's gonna check again. So now, this time, the router says, oh, I know who that 192.168.50.10 is. I'm gonna send that. So what's happening? I'm gonna get that echo response back now, guys. So this PC is gonna reply, it's gonna go back to the router, and it's gonna basically go back to my PC. So this case, you can see, I'm gonna get a response. So here I can see, guys, look, I've got a response for this ICMP. So the second one came back. Now it's gonna basically send a third message out. So again, each time, it's gonna take its time, guys, but eventually, here it comes, here's our third ICMP. So again, we're taking it one step at a time, guys to show this process. And you can see now my third ICMP is coming back and my PC should get that response when it comes back in. So here we go. So here again, I'm gonna show you. So here we have it guys. We've now got the third response coming back in. So the first one failed, the next two came in. Let's see the final one. So again, what we'll see is the final ICMP. Here it comes, off it goes over to my PC2 and back the response comes and I should have now my final ICMP message. So here we can see, guys, that we've now got, out of these four messages, the first one timed out, but then we got three responses. So you can see in this case that I've now got, I can, I've proved connectivity. 
if we were to ping again, if I went back into real time mode, guys, and this is just to kind of fast forward it so that we're not looking at every individual step. If I go back in here to my PC and do a ping, so it's kind of in real time or live, if I do this and press enter, we should get all four pings back. So let's try that. Again, here I can see, guys, I'm not dropping the first one. Why? Because the router, and everyone knows at this stage, they've got mappings. If I go to ARP and dash A, I can see that I've now got mappings between me to over to, this you can see is over to PC1, and I can see I've got a mapping over to, for example, my default gateway. Okay, so that's the end, guys, of um, basically part three. In part four, the final piece of this, I wanna just talk about the routing table. But I hope you can see from this, guys, that we've got basically connectivity from one network to another network. Join me for part four, guys, where we're just gonna look indeed again at that routing table, just to ensure that we're fully happy with it. Okay, guys, thanks for viewing and see you soon.